So we're now at one of the Bluestone sites in Priscelli in West Wales. Now this absolutely blows me away. This is one of the actual sites with the bluestones that exist within Stonehenge come from. There's obviously a very large bluestone uh, at Stonehenge and then there's the sort of circle within the middle which was once a horseshoe shape. Um, and so this really blows me away because the research I've been doing on ancient quarries as being the birthplace of the temple is very uh, persistent here because these this is the exact spot where some not all of the blue stones but some of the blue stones came from this was excavated recently in 2011 mike parker pearson visited this place timothy darville and jeffrey wainwright and robin heath's been researching this as well and this has been proven they've done the tests on the, on the blue stone and they found some exact matches with stonehenge so this is absolutely fascinating so this is the sacred site the originated Stonehenge and if you look at Robin Heath's research you can see the Great Lunation Triangle links this area with Lundy with Stonehenge which is magnified downwards into the four station stones within Stonehenge and so they were marking this site within Stonehenge there was a clue within the site itself so this is absolutely remarkable um, it's just started raining here, but we've got some aerial shots. But we're going to have a closer look and see if we can find any evidence of actual stonework in here and quarrying and whether, you know, which stones or what's left there were actually dug out of the ground and taken to Stonehenge because there's going to, apparently there's some evidence here. And we're going to look, look at some really beautiful parts of this rocky outcrop, which is, um, which is uh, absolutely blown me away. And so we're really close to uh, Pentry Ifan. We're close to the two other quarry sites. We're cl close to Bed Arthur or Arthur's Grave, Arthur's Bed. Um, and this is just down by the side of the road, uh, which will we'll give more details in the final video. So over the last year or two, I've been really fascinated by the idea that quarries where the megalithic stones come from for many of the major sites around the planet is actually a sacred site and is still revered multiple generations later and it marks the birthplace of the temple and what we have here is the birthplace of Stonehenge this is the rocky outcrop where some of the stones the blue stones from Stonehenge came from and possibly way before Stonehenge was built the megalith builders of Stonehenge originated in this particular area of West Wales. And there's good evidence for that. The Robin Heath uh, spells out in his two books, Blue Stone Magic and Proto Stonehenge in Wales. And that the actual originators of Stonehenge came from this area. This is also the legendary area where Merlin was said to live. And he was said to have transported stones over from Well Island to Stonehenge, but it could well have been this area because According to Robin Heath and other researchers, West Wales was part of Ireland as such, you know, uh, in a kind of uh, state by state or county way. And so there could be some meaning in that. And so not only have you got the Merlin legends in the history of the Kings of Britain by Geoffrey of Monmouth, who talks about the stones coming from uh, the west part of Britain or Ireland or Wales. We also have many sites around here like Bed Arthur, uh, Pentry Ifan, uh, many other dolmen sites um, that Robin's been researching that do suggest that the measurement systems, the metrology, the geometry, the astronomy and the surveying and layout techniques as well as the megalithic construction developed here first before they went east towards Stonehenge and they marked it on the map in the Great Lunation Triangle so the story just gets weirder and weirder the more you look into it more clues keep coming out the more you look into the invisible aspects of these quarry sites and I believe these are the forgotten sites the forgotten stones that are an important aspect of any megalithic site so it's all around here you can see where they've the archaeologist did some groundwork here and they they've covered it all back up now but some of these stones do look like they are like ready to go megalithic blocks you can just see some of them here all the way along this this blue stone edge here it really does look like here it just looks like a stone's been cut out and removed from this particular spot how they did it we don't know how they then transported it across marshland, across rivers, 
across mountains to get to Stonehenge is a whole different story that only Merlin knows the answer to. And this looks like just an unworked piece of block here. This is like an unworked piece of stone that was part of the original quarrying. And any one of these, you could cut these out. It certainly doesn't look like it's been cut out there. They could have been well have chipped off and you can see the way they've all fallen down here or have they been hacked off? And actually they were part of the quarrying process. So I'm gonna take some GPS readings here because I think this is important. I think this is a very important part of understanding Stonehenge or any megalithic sites for that matter. We have the Moai on Easter Island. There's a quarry there that has the largest Moai or Easter Island head still in the quarry. We have the same thing at Gebekli Tepe where the largest stone is in the quarry. We have the same thing at Karahan Tepe. It's down by the side uh, in the quarry there. We also find it in Aswan Quarry, the largest obelisk granite stones are found in the quarry still not quite finished or waiting to be put in place and, and moved to their potential location we find the same with Baalbek the largest stones at Baalbek are in the quarry there and now we're at the quarry for Stonehenge possibly the most famous megalithic site in the world whether we'll find any evidence of finished finished stones here that haven't been moved yet we don't know because I think the local people around here over thousands of years were using this stone to build their houses and other constructions in the area but this is one of the most important sites in relation to Stonehenge. Check this out, have a look at this. This is a piece of the bluestone. It's difficult to see here, it's so when you shine it up, you really get a sense of the blueness comes out. There's been some polished stones which do show that. But this is very interesting. So this could have been a chip off a stone that made its way to Stonehenge over 130 miles away in Wiltshire from here in Wales. I mean, just where I'm standing now, you can just see behind me, all around the floor here, this entire outcrop is the stone, Stonehenge Bluestone. This is, this is it. Very important site, very, very important. And I'm absolutely blown away that we made it here on this trip to West Wales. This looks like a spot where the stone has been pulled out from. You can kind of see that here. See where it's been chipped out from? Likewise, these look like they've got marks on them. They've been chipped at right angles. It could be natural. They do form in straight lines, this kind of blue stone. But you never know. I mean, they could have just been loose stones. That one looks like it's been partly shaped. Actually looks like one of the Stonehenge stones, that one. And then it got broken, so they couldn't use it, perhaps. So I'm sitting now right on top, I'll let you see on the rocky outcrop, you can see it behind me there. This is the main outcrop of the Bluestone site. That was recently discovered in 2011. I'm right on top of it here, I managed to climb up. You can hear the river flowing down below. So whether this was partly used and they transported it on water, we don't know, it's highly likely. They could have transported the stones using ice during the winter. Well, they could have used some magical technique we just don't know about. We know that in the legends of Merlin, in the history of the Kings of Britain, and traditional stories we find in Wales, going way, way back, they in fact transported them using magical powers and levitated them across the landscape, potentially all the way to Stonehenge. But there is talk of giants as well. In this area, we find them. Merlin summoned giants to help him move the stones from Killaroos 
which could have been an island, but it's more likely in Wales, to Stonehenge. Um, and so giants were involved, and we know there are hundreds of giant accounts and legends, thousands of legends, in fact, all across this part of the country. And so this is a really magical part of Wales. And not only do you get the fairy lore and all the elemental realm are still alive and well here, we also have the legends and the stories of the giants helping Merlin, helping construct these megalithic sites. And there's many around here attributed to the giants. So you have to, it really does make you think there might be more to this than what the archeologists tell us. Another story we find which is quite interesting is the whole story that the blue stones have healing properties. This was something, strangely, it was put forward by Geoffrey Wainwright and Timothy Darvill, who were archaeologists back in 2000, way back in 2008, 2009, originally, and that the reason the stones from here were taken to Stonehenge was because they had healing properties. And we know that Merlin talked about this, where he poured water on these particular stones, and this is all in the whole legendary material and the history of the kings of Britain, that the water would be good for healing, different ailments, uh, arthritis and pain and things like this. And so the archeologists then put this out as a big thing back in 2009 and it really caused a kind of stir because it's really not something that the archeologists adhere to, but they were kind of almost like jumping on the bandwagon of what the new ages and what the uh, alternative thinkers and uh, the antiquarians had been saying for a very, very long time. And Robin Heath discussed this. We've got a couple of his lectures up online where he talks about the sites here and the whole Blue Stones healing shock headline um, that occurred. But it does raise questions because all sites could have healing properties if water's poured through them. A crystalline rock we know has that. Um, so there could be more to that than meets the eye. They could have just been the tip of the iceberg, really. And the fact that the sites have now been scientifically discovered and they've been tested, they are, in fact, we are definitely on one here where some of the blue stones came from. It does raise a lot of questions, how they moved them, who the people were, why they moved them from here to Stonehenge. No one's really asking these questions. Um, to say they're just because of healing properties isn't strong enough to me. There's got to be more to it than that. This is the same thing uh, Robin Heath's been looking at. And so you have to look at the, the landscape setting and the alignments between here and Stonehenge. And suddenly the Great Lunation Triangle that Robin discovered many years ago suddenly becomes the potential answer. And so they were given us clues at Stonehenge that they did come from this part of Wales. There's bluestone chips in the Albury holes and some of the graves, even in the ditch. Some of the earliest sites, the earliest parts of Stonehenge rather, were, did have blue stones associated with them, whether they were chips or actual stones. So the earliest construction phase was no doubt connected with the people from Wales. So on the back part of the outcrop here, but all around here, we find evidence of quarrying. We find the blue stones. And it is really quite remarkable that this has been located. These look like they've been worked. These really do. You can see all the blue stone chips down here suggesting this was indeed a quarry site. These perfectly cut stone blocks here, but as has been pointed out before, it's hard to know when this was quarried because you can't carbon date stone. So it becomes a tricky problem to try and work out. But the tests that have been done on Stonehenge do fascinate me. Mm -hmm.